Are you a good person? Have you ever lied? What happens after someone dies? Have you ever stolen anything? Trust in Christ. A teenage boy named Joseph Smith Jr. said he had a vision while he was praying in the woods. According to the official account, he said he was visited in the 1820s by God the Father and Jesus Christ, who told him that Christianity had become corrupt, that all the churches were wrong, their creeds were an abomination, and he shouldn't join any of them. Three years later, Joseph was visited by an angel named Moroni who told him where to find some golden, buried golden plates that would explain the true gospel and tell him about the history of the American Indians. These plates were supposedly written in reformed Egyptian. So he had to translate them into English, and the result eventually became known as the Book of Mormon, another testament of Jesus Christ. With that as a backdrop, now let's look at what Mormons believe and where they get their teaching from. His followers are known as Mormons, and they have taught some very interesting things, such as that if it weren't for Joseph Smith, nobody would be saved. If it had not been for Joseph Smith and the Restoration, there would be no salvation. There is no salvation outside the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Mormons get their beliefs from five main sources. The Book of Mormon, which Joseph Smith said is the most correct of any book on earth. Second, the Doctrine and Covenants, which is a book mostly about theology. Third, the Pearl of Great Price. Fourth, the King James Bible, insofar as it is translated correctly, which for the average Mormon means the Bible cannot be trusted entirely. But the ultimate authority in the Mormon Church comes from the living Mormon apostles and prophets, especially the president, who is considered to be the voice of God on earth, kind of like a Mormon pope. And he can overturn any teaching of a previous president, which is not uncommon. Let's now look at what they teach about God. Joseph Smith said in what's called the King Follett Funeral Discourse, one of his last teachings before uh, he was uh, killed in the Carthage jail. He said, we have imagined and supposed that God has been God from all eternity. I will refute that idea and take away the veil so that you may see. When he refuted the idea that God had eternally been God, he forever separated his followers from biblical Christianity. Until Mormonism can repudiate that belief, there is no way that Mormonism can even begin to consider biblical Christianity. And so when we talk about the biblical Jesus, we have to step back and say, first we start with an eternal God, who in Psalm 90 verse 2, before the mountains were brought forth, wherever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. So when we talk about Jesus being God, when we point to the passages on the deity of Christ, which a Mormon will accept, they believe Jesus is a God. He is the God of the Old Testament, just a different God than Elohim. They have two different gods at that point. We need to emphasize we are talking about an eternal God who created all things, who is not himself created. He is not himself one of the spirits of men. Interestingly enough, Mormons believe that Jesus is Jehovah. And yet when you go in the Old Testament, Jehovah creates the spirits of men, Zechariah 12.1. And yet in Mormonism, he is one of the spirits of men. In Colossians chapter 1, Paul, uh, Paul describes Jesus and says that he is the creator of all things visible, invisible, principalities, powers, dominions, or authorities, all things created by Him and for Him. He is before all things, and in Him all things exist, consist, hold together. And yet in Mormonism, Jesus obviously was not the one who created the planet that His Father lived on when He was a man, or the God before Him, or the God before Him. And so they have to limit these descriptions of Jesus to just having relevance to this planet. Elohim was once a man who lived on another planet. And he went through a pro process of, of following the gospel there. He was deemed worthy, and when he died, he was resurrected with his wives, organized this world. Notice I did not say created, because the Mormon God cannot create anything ex nihilo, out of nothing or into nothing. He can only organize pre-existing matter. But he organized this earth, 
and he begets spirit children with his wives. The first begotten of his spirit children was Jehovah or Jesus. We all are the spirit brothers of Jesus. Each one of us, you and I, we were also begotten by Elohim and one of his heavenly wives in a spiritual pre-existence. Another one of the offspring of Elohim was Lucifer. Is Jesus the spirit brother of Lucifer and you and you and me? Yes. Was Jesus Lucifer's brother? Yes. Okay, and, and as you are his brother. And Lucifer's brother? <laughs> as you are Jesus' brother as well. We're all children of our Heavenly Father. In the pre-mortal spirit life, Jesus, Lucifer, and all of us were the spirit children of God and his wives. The Bible clearly warns against preaching another Jesus and that Satan himself can appear to us as an angel of light. Remember what Joseph Smith said. He said it was an angel clothed in light that gave him another testament. According to the Bible, it is crucial that we have the true Jesus and the true gospel. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than what we have preached to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be accursed. What does the Mormon Church teach about heaven and hell? In Mormonism, there is almost a universal salvation. They believe almost everyone will go to heaven. But there are a few people that they believe actually go to an eternal hell that become sons of perdition. The extremes of hell, I think very few people actually go there. Um, it's, it's, there's, there's different degrees in heaven. There's different degrees of uh, spiritual prison or hell. So in a nutshell, Mormons believe that almost everyone goes to some form of heaven. There are three levels of heaven according to Mormonism and Mormons want to go to the top level where they can become their own God and with their wives produce lots of spirit babies. And the bottom level is for non-Mormons, for Hitler, for murderers, rapists, child molesters, liars and thieves. Just a moment, Hitler gets to go to a low level heaven? Who then goes to hell? Well. Mormons call hell outer darkness, and that's primarily reserved for the devil and his angels and a few apostate Mormons. Hitler might actually qualify for the low level of heaven, which Joseph Smith said is so wonderful that if a man could get a glimpse into that low level heaven, he would be tempted to commit suicide to get there. For we know that it is by grace that we are saved after all we can do. When it comes to salvation, there is a big difference between what the Bible says and what the Book of Mormon says. A defining verse for Mormonism is found in 2 Nephi 25, 23. For we know that it is by grace that we're saved after all we can do. Can you say that again? Yeah. For we know that it is by grace that we're saved after all that we can do. After all we can do? No, that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. And Titus says, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to His mercy He saved us. For the Christian, grace is not only unmerited favor, it is demerited favor. It, is, it comes freely from God. It is powerful. It accomplishes that which God intends to accomplish, and it is not dependent upon human actions to add to it. Grace for the Mormon is a, is a completely different concept. Joseph Smith had no idea of what grace really was. Uh, in, in the Book of Mormon, it says in 2 Nephi 25, 23, that it is by grace we're saved after all we can do. I like to say to Mormons, it's by grace we're saved in spite of all we've done, not after all we can do. And Moroni 10.32 says that we are to love the Lord our God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to rid ourselves of all ungodliness 
then is the grace of Christ sufficient for us. Well, my friend, if you can rid yourself of all ungodliness and love God perfectly before receiving the grace of Christ, why do you need the grace of Christ to begin with? Complete disjunction between, between the two. How can, you, how can you say that I am saved just by grace alone? It is through your service, through your sacrifice, and through um, doing everything you can to make your Heavenly Father proud that He's going to say, okay, my good and faithful servant, well, listen welcome to, home. Listen to God's word, and I'll say it slowly. Scripture says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's the gift of God, not of works, lest any man boast. So you've got but a don't, choice. Don't you think that has two meanings? I mean, you've said that twice. Just, <laughs> I've gone around. you can't around. earn a gift. You well, can't earn God's mercy. Well, say it's your birthday. I'm going to give you a gift on your birthday because mm -hmm. you did something your birth. Heavenly Father's not just going to give us gifts if we're not going to do anything to show Him that, that, that we're doing everything we can to make Him proud. You know, you don't, you don't get something for nothing, ever. I mean, you've get, you have to earn your, your chances. I mean, he, He's always going to give you more than well, you deserve. Well, there's That's your choice. Sure. You've got the teachings of the Mormon Church or God's Holy Word. Teachings of the Mormon Church says you have to do something to be saved. God's Word says there's nothing you can do. So your eternal salvation depends on your understanding of that. So please consider God's Word it's over and above <laughs> the teachings of the Mormon Church. The Bible couldn't be any clearer. We're saved by God's grace through faith and not by works. In other words, salvation is a gift from God and we can't do anything to earn it. But listen to this quote by a Mormon prophet and president of the Mormon Church, Spencer Kimball. Quote, one of the most fallacious doctrines originated by Satan and propounded by man is that man is saved alone by the grace of God and that belief in Jesus Christ alone is all that is needed for salvation. How can he get away with that? I mean, don't Mormons read their Bible? That's in direct opposition to what the scriptures say. The Bible tells us we're saved by grace and not by works. Yes, unfortunately, some Mormons don't read their Bibles, but the ones who do have been taught to filter what they read through the rest of the Mormon books. So by the time the words get to their brain, they can mean something entirely different than their intended meaning. The Christian says, my salvation is through grace alone. The Mormon will say, yes, I believe the same. Well, then you have nowhere to go. But if they, uh, the Christian, ask the Mormon to define all of these things up front, then you can take them to God's Word and show them from God's Word the, the real meaning and definition of what it means to be a true born-again believer. If you've ever spoken to a Mormon, sometimes you know how frustrating it can be when they use the same words you do but they mean something different and you're not sure how to finish the conversation. Well, we found that it's good to leave them with a clear distinction. Tell them, if the Mormon religion is right and I'm wrong, then I go to the third heaven. But if the Bible is right and the LDS church is wrong, then you are following a false Jesus and you'll end up in hell forever. They'll usually agree with that distinction and now you've left them with something heavy to think about. You've shared the biblical gospel. And remember, that is the power of God to salvation. And if you're not careful, with a clear understanding of the Bible, you could get sucked into the religion yourself. So what's the average Christian to do? What's the best way to reach a Mormon? Well, do you remember what the Apostle Paul said? He said, the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes and everyone includes the Mormon. While it's very helpful to know the false teaching of the LDS Church, that's why we made this program, you don't have to memorize the Book of Mormon and live in Utah for three years to be able to reach a Mormon. God has already given you something very powerful and it's called the Gospel. It saves to the uttermost everyone who believes. The Mormon's no different than the Jehovah's Witness, the Roman Catholic or the Jew. It's just sinful man trying to wash himself clean with a different brush. Did you know that while Mormons appear to be very confident and put together on the outside, many are actually dealing with a great amount of stress internally because they are striving for what they call perfection. 
They're told week after week to be perfect as your Father in heaven is perfect. So they believe they must be worthy and only then will God save them. And the obvious question to every Mormon is, am I worthy enough? And the answer is, they don't know. What was it that convinced you to be converted, to become a Christian? Um, I was hungry. I was really hungry and uh, I was searching for Jesus and the Mormon church. I had, I was very active when my children were young and then kind of fell away. I got really tired, heavy burdened, um, doing works, lots of works. And um, what do you mean by when, works? Just um, lots of jobs. They, they just really expect a lot. You're kind of working your way to heaven. They're kind of, it's kind of um, Christ, his, what he did for us on the cross only covers after all we can do. So you do all you can, and then what he did kind of covers the rest. But the big question is, how do you know when you've done enough? How do you know how much is enough? So there's no real hope for the moment? There's, no, it's like this endless pit because they want, you need to be perfect in order to achieve, you know, the celestial kingdom. You have to keep all the commandments. Who can keep all the commandments? And you work and, and you're just, it's, most of the Mormon women I know are just filled with, with ho just despair inside. They're heavy. What can um, we do to reach lost? them? Lost. Um, just through love. Just love them and tell them the truth. So what you must do is reinforce their predicament. Show them they're not even close to being perfect or worthy and therefore headed for hell. You must show them that the leap they're trying to make to heaven is a thousand times wider than the widest part of the Grand Canyon. What they're trying to do is impossible. This is actually good news for a Mormon because it strips him of his false hope and opens the door to the gospel. In other words, if you don't feel you can handle debating Mormon doctrine, you can set them aside and go straight for the conscience. Your job is to bring him to the foot of the cross. He must realize that he is totally bankrupt morally. He must realize that like everyone else, he's unable to please God with his own moral achievements. Only then will he stop trusting in himself to be good enough and rely solely on Jesus Christ. Not on the LDS church, not on his own good works, but in Christ alone. So start by asking, do you think you're a good person? When he says, yes, I'm trying to be, I'm doing all that I can, take him through the Ten Commandments. Are you guys LDS? Mm -hmm. What's in it for me if I become a, a Mormon? That's a loaded question. Yeah. <laughs> what would I get out of I'm not a Mormon. What do I get out of if I become a Mormon? Are you Christian? Yes. Same concept, just, I don't know, different, little different views, more, I don't know, I guess more information on some respects, I guess. What is different in Mormonism than Christian? Mormonism is Christian. Um, it's just like a different belief of it. It's just like a separate set of pattern of beliefs. It's not necessarily like not Christian. We believe in Christ. We believe he was our savior. Um, is a big difference would be that he's Lucifer's brother? Well, well, yeah. That's not Christian. Well, technically, aren't we all brothers and sisters, though? Yeah, but not the brother of Lucifer. Didn't God create him? That's right, yeah. Um, when you die, where will you go? Depends on how you acted. And, you know, if you repented for sins or anything like that. Where are you going to go? I don't know. You don't know? I wish I knew. Could you end up in out of darkness and hell? I could. Does could that fun. concern you? Yeah, it would suck. I can't say I'd be happy about going there. <laughs> what about you? I hope I don't go to outer darkness. Yeah, so how do you know you're not going there? Just believe in Christ. The LDS faith believes that um, outer darkness is only for sons of perdition, which I don't know if everybody's familiar with that term, but... What is it? It's someone who has the full knowledge of Christ, so someone who has known Christ, you know, like a Christian, but then also has been given extra information like revelation, say, or just someone who's known that and then is denied him. So it's what do you think Christ. of the Bible verse that says all liars are their part in the lake of fire? Is the lake of fire synonymous with outer darkness? Well, that's, a, that's the biblical description of hell. It's Revelation 21 verse 8. All liars are their part in the lake of fire. So that, that's pretty heavy. 
Am I speaking the truth? Yeah, no, that's true, definitely. Um, and I mean, who of us is free from lying? I mean, everybody tells So lies. you have lied? Oh, yeah. Have you lied? Yeah. So what are you called if you tell a lie? Uh, you're called a sinner, a liar. A liar. Have you ever stolen something? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh, that's theft. Um, have you ever used God's name in vain? Oh, yeah, guilty. No, I don't. I think I'm actually pretty good on that one. Pretty good. It's called blasphemy. We use God's name in vain. What I'm doing is going through some of the commandments, and the commandments just show what we are. It, they reveal sin to us. Jesus said, if you look with lust, you commit adultery in your heart. Have you ever looked with lust? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Ben, listen to this. You're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart. So if you face God on Judgment Day, will you be innocent or guilty? It depends if you truly repented of sin. Uh -huh. And what do you think of that? I agree. It says, it talks about, you know, if you believe in Christ and, you know, trust in Him that He's going to be your Redeemer. He suffered for our sins, so no one expects us to be perfect. We're just supposed to try our hardest, and where we fail, He should make up for it. So if you fail, He makes up for it? He kind of pays the difference, I guess. You're not sure of that? I, I mean, that's how I would... I'm sure of it, I just... What do you think, Ben? Is she speaking, is she speaking uh, Mormon doctrine? I don't know if it's necessarily Mormon doctrine, but that's my set of beliefs. I believe that's how most of the LES faith would stand behind. And the Bible says something different. It says that, that Christ died for our sins once and for all, and the moment you trust in Him, you're completely justified. You're made right with God. You're made perfect by God's grace. And it's nothing to do with you living a good life or trying to please God because you can't. If you're a lying, thieving, blasphemous, adulterate heart, you can't please God. The only thing you can do is repent and trust in Him. The minute you do that in a heartbeat, God justifies you, he cleanses you of sin, and you're born again. And God gives you a new heart and new desires so that you know you're going to escape the damnation of hell. In fact, the New Testament says if you're a Christian, if you're born again, you can have boldness on the day of wrath. Boldness, total courage before God because you know that you're sheltered by the blood of Christ from God's wrath against your sin. So trust in God and pray for the Mormon. And remember, when a person leaves the Mormon church, he's not just leaving his religion, he's leaving a whole way of life, possibly his friends, his family, and his job. But remember, Jesus said, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Over 40 years ago, my wife and I were married in this temple behind me. And we were very active in the Mormon church and we were very successful. I held positions as elders quorum president three different times. And I was called from that position into the stake high council and I served there for three and a half years. And it was while I was in that position that we started studying Mormonism and studied ourselves out. Well, we decided we had to separate ourselves from the Mormon Church, and the only way we could get out of the Mormon Church at that time was to be excommunicated. As part of that excommunication, our names were read in the local men's priesthood meeting at, at the ward that we attended. Well, there's no reason given. The letter just states that uh, we have been excommunicated. And so the following Monday morning, the rumor in town was that I had committed adultery. And by the end of the week, not only had I committed adultery, but I had gone into fundamentalism, which is polygamy, that I had six and possibly even seven wives. So we decided we had better start telling people the real reason why we had left the church, that it was doctrinal, that the doctrines were incorrect, they were not biblical. Well, that caused a lot of concern to the leadership of the Mormon church, the local leadership. So in their state conference, the state president announced that since Higley's have now left the church, he didn't use the word excommunicate, that, that Higley's have left the church, please don't do business with them. We had uh, retail business, plus we had a real estate and development company. They boycotted our businesses and literally put us out of business because the town that we lived in was over 85 percent Mormon at the time. It was a real struggle for us financially, but God is faithful and has provided for us ever since. We lost our businesses, we lost our home, we lost our vehicles, but uh, God provided for us and has continually blessed us and uh, we praise God for all that He's done for us. 
So be patient, continue to plant seeds of truth, and never forget, salvation is of the Lord. I mean, all the years that I had lived in Utah up to that point, almost 20 years, I had never had a Christian who came to me and said, would you listen to this? Would you hear this? Would you check this? No, nobody. And then even though we knew a lot of people, you know, when we were in business, you know, not personally, they were not, uh, the Christians or the non-Mormons in our community were not our friends um, because we only had Mormon friends. And it was interesting because after we left the Mormon church, there were many people that we then, when we started finally going to Christian churches, after almost two years of studying the Bible alone, we recognized some of the people that we had seen in our store. We had talked to them, we had visited them, you know, in a business level, but nobody ever had t told us anything. And they were saying now to us, well, we are so glad you're out of Mormonism. I felt like saying, no, thanks to you. You know, it, you didn't care enough to tell me the truth, but they, many of them said, we thought you were so, uh, happy as a Mormon, you were content as a Mormon, you were such a nice people. We didn't want to disturb you, your life in that way. We hope this program has been helpful. If you're a Mormon and have questions, please visit our website at wearthemaster.com and let us help you. And if you're a Christian, continue to pray for the lost and reach out with what you've learned from us and other wonderful ministries devoted to reaching Mormons. God bless you.